Hi and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today we take a look at the Oyster Perpetual 36mm, reference 11 6000, which can be considered an entry level Rolex. Although entry level has to be taken with a grain of salt when it comes to Rolex, as this thing will set you back more than $5000. So there's nothing entry level about the price. Luckily, there's nothing entry level about the rest of the watch as well. The watch is made of the same 904L steel, just like the rest of Rolex models. The crystal is also sapphire, and the bracelet is the same high quality oyster bracelet with solid links and links and an impeccable clasp, with the only thing missing being the glide lock system you get on a Submariner. And speaking of the Submariner, this watch is powered by the caliber 3130 that is also used on the no date sub. So a tried and tested movement that will work reliably and accurately for years. All that comes with impeccable fit and finish that we're used to see on a Rolex watch. So this watch is placed as an entry level model not because of its lack of performance or execution compared to other models in the Rolex lineup, but simply because Rolex decided to market that way. And I'm personally happy for that, as it makes this watch a true value proposition compared to its more famous brothers. And while some people will gladly pay extra to get the Rolex Explorer, because of its Mount Everest history that Rolex keeps shoving into our faces, true watch aficionados will know it was actually an Oyster Perpetual that was issued to Sir Edmund Hillary for his Mount Everest expedition, making this more historically accurate than the Explorer. Although even that is questionable as Sir Edmund himself claims he used the Smith's watch for the actual summit climb, but that is a topic for another video. My point is that this watch has more history than Rolex wants to give it credit to. On top of that, it has a timeless and unquestionably Rolex design with the stick hands and markers. The lack of the date complication makes the dial look even better, as it's perfectly symmetrical. Although this version, called White Grape, appears hard to read at first glance because of the white gold markers that blend in with the champagne dial, you soon realize it's surprisingly easy to read the time on it thanks to the white loom paint used to fill in the markers and hands. Not to mention that both catch the light easily, making them stand out. Although I would prefer a black or blue color, the dial layout and design are as close to perfection as I could wish. Then we move on to the case. The classical Oyster case has brushed top surfaces and polished sides. The bezel is rounded, unlike the Explorer bezel that has a flat surface. The case is 36 mm wide and with a lug to lug of 44 mm wears perfectly on a smaller wrist even with the protruding T-shaped end links of the bracelet. But more importantly than the dimensions themselves are the proportions of the case, bezel and dial. In my Date Just 2 video I explained how I disliked the fact Rolex disrupted the perfect proportions of the 36mm version. Well I can say that this 36mm Oyster Perpetual has those perfect proportions. It has to be one of the best looking and most comfortable cases I have ever put on my wrist. The bracelet is silky smooth and incredibly comfortable. The already mentioned glide lock would be a nice addition, but honestly it's not a deal breaker. The fact the whole bracelet is brushed means the scratches are a lot less pronounced than on the polished version of the Datejust 2 I reviewed, making this watch more suitable as an everyday wear. Now in conclusion, I can say that I find this one, to be one of the best Rolex watches out there, and I'm personally glad Rolex treats it as an entry level, as it means its price will always be lower than its brethren, making purchase of one easier, now if I ever decide to get one. And I have to say I am thinking about it as the size, the comfort, and the classical design of this thing just sings to me. I would however opt for a different dial, and maybe even go for the Blue Explorer version. Since I can't afford one just yet, I do hope Rolex keeps making these in this size for at least a couple more years, if I decide to snag one. Now I just wanted to mention another video from a fellow YouTuber, Just Blue Fish, 
So if you want to see a very, very detailed review of this watch, make sure to check out his video and I will put a link probably in the corner of the screen. Well, that's it when it comes to this week's review. So I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye.